Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I have no idea what time you're watching this, so I covered all three. <clears throat> Sunday, February 11th, the Super Bowl. See, now, I'm old enough to remember when the Super Bowl was on the last weekend of January, which is this weekend. So since there's no football, I'm sure there'll be a lot of attention to what is the biggest week of your life for now. As for the Super Bowl next year, whatever the date is, September or February 2025, when you do buy your t-shirts supporting whatever team in the NFL that you're supporting, take a look at the tag. I bet you're going to see on there that made by Glacier Worldwide. That's right. You heard it here. So on to the spreadsheet. And I'll, I'll tell you here, okay? I'll, I'll just go into here. I'm due to do a one-on-one -on -one call with someone who suffers from FOMO, overtrading. Talk to him many times. So I told him, okay, before we do this phone call, send me your spreadsheet. And he sends me over a QQ spreadsheet and... I could have put that together in three seconds. It has zero detail, zero, zero trading, future forecasting, zero. All it has done is looked at what the results were for the day. That's it. No color coding, nothing at all. So don't try and fuck me. I take my personal time on the weekends, which I am in living in absolute paradise. I love being outside. I love spending time outside. I love watching the sunrise. Market closes right before the sunrise. So when we're going to spend some time together, take advantage of it, utilize it, because you know, I will do anything I can do to make you a much more successful trader. So now that we're done with that, 2023, the year of the pronouns is over, and we are through four weeks of the year, four weeks, four Fridays. So you only got 48 left. Three green weeks, 80, 67, and 37.55. New all-time high on Friday on the SPX with horrific range throughout the course of the week. However, as those of you who are doing spreads are very well aware, the risk pays. And like I said there in the email on Friday, let it come to you. And it came to you as you got that 4906.69 and you got over a hundred percent and full credit on the 4905, 4900s. Track records there. You go back through the chat room, go back through the spread room. You can see everything that's there. You're making money every day doing spreads. Go over there and do the single call legs, options, you know, calls and puts on zero DTE. You're snorting the fucking cocaine that Robin Hood trained you to snort back in 2020. So make the changes. Don't make the changes. It's completely up to you. But as back on to the SPX, three green weeks in a row used to be back in the real world. Three green weeks in a row was a humongous warning sign hey, you got three green weeks, you ain't getting a fourth week. So with that in mind, I've already come together here with one for Monday on the SPX spreads, January 29th, buy the 4905 calls, sell the 4900 calls. You're only going to get $1.50 as of the close on Friday, but however, because we did close red, we are not oversold anywhere by any shape or form. If you do want to let 4900 come to you, by all means, feel free. For the week, same shit goes. Buy the 4,900 calls, sell the 4,895 calls. And as of the close on Friday, you could get somewhere close to around $2.50. $2.50 credit, $2.50 risk, 100% on your money, closing below 
48.95 on Friday. And we will get to that in a minute because I will tell you right now, this week has so much involved. All I'm trying to do here is to give you the big, broad, wide view as to where we are because you are going to get torn around left, right, and center if you are going to try and aggressively be involved with this week. Because not only, where is it? Don't need the Super Bowl anymore. Not only do we get Microsoft AMD Alphabet on Tuesday, we also get Starbucks. And I will tell you right now, we will have a 32 trade on Starbucks after they report on Tuesday. So Wednesday morning, I will be issuing an alert on Starbucks due to what I predict and I am hoping for actually takes place. And then we'll have a trade after that. Qualcomm on Wednesday. However, Wednesday is your FOMC meeting. On Thursday, then you get Apple, Amazon, and Meta. So you get the group six of the Magnificent Seven. And Kramer has gone and thrown Tesla out of the Magnificent Seven. And that's because you can replace it with AMD. So you have Microsoft, AMD, Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Meta, and NVIDIA. And talking about the Magnificent Seven, this is the best place I have ever found. It makes it very simple. It's a website called slickcharts.com. Go over there onto the... I can't stop these advertisements from popping up, so give me a second. Skip ad. Yep, go off the screen. We have Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta. No more Tesla. Where's AMD? AMD 23, AMD. This is the weight that these individual stocks have on the S&P 500. Microsoft and Apple alone are worth 14%. Add in Amazon, add in Google, that's 20% of the S&P 500 is four stocks. Come over onto the NASDAQ. QQQ, like I keep saying, everything is inside QQQ. Apple, 8.9. Microsoft, 8.9. Amazon, 4.8. Meta, 4.1. Alphabet, call it plus 5.2. And AMD down here at 2.2. 40% in those six stocks. 40% of the QQQ in those six stocks. So earnings are big. FOMC is big. Three green weeks in a row is big. QQQ, whoo, three green weeks in a row, closed up 40 cents. Big, big, big down day there on Friday. Big down day. Ooh, color coded that the wrong way. It's a minus two point gap down. Fractional gap, 426.35, 426.21, not filled. 14 cents, 7 cents, 14 cents, whatever the fuck. No minus 1%, no plus 1%. You're treading water going into a very, very big week. So I'll leave you with a clip here before we get going on that, because chart measurements are the most significant thing. And this is how a lot of people measure their charts. And you know what? I like it. So as we are here on the SPX, the SPX looking at a five day, five days only, couldn't fill that gap, couldn't fill that gap, have the weekend gap from last week unfilled. 
4% run off of that 47-14. When, like I was saying on that Wednesday and that going into that Thursday, it's do or dump. That's it. And we didn't do it. We came down. We fractionally missed filling that gap. And right there in the middle of the day there on that Thursday, we went into ramp mode into this week, which is a very, very, very big week. Tiny gap, tiny gap, bigger gap, bigger gap, tiny gap. A lot of guys look at this and say, ah, this is bullish. So I will widen you out a bit so you can see what the bigger, broader picture is of this. And this number is wrong because this number is now and I'll get into this in a second, 802.91 and 19.57%. So bear with me because having this detail is always going to help you out when you are looking at this as for what it is, which is you want the wider view as much as you want the narrowed in view. So this is an 802.91 point move, 19.57%, essentially an entire year condensed into a three-month period. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> Bring you out onto what I was showing you from before, which was the big, big, broad, wide view. And like I said, 798, that was the, val that was the count that I continued to go with. However... If you wanted to go off of the December low, which some people have, then it's an 842 point run. So you have your A or your one, sorry, your two, your three, 842 points. Here's your four and here's our five, 803 points, 842 points. Can't stress it enough. Your upside, extremely limited. This week, makes a big difference because as you've been looking at this from the view that we have been in, we've got a one, we've got a two, we've got a three, and this very much looks like a very condensed one, two, three, four, five. Come on to the QQQ. It gets a little bit clearer. You've got your one, you've got your two, you've got your three, very clean, very shallow four, your five, which was a failed five being this was just a one fraction wave up and a break below 420 420.83 below that low from back here on january 23 would start to identify as we have topped out a break below right over here your highs over here at wave one 410 would start to confirm we have topped out and here what we're looking at, you know, is just a 15-day, 30-minute with a couple of gaps. One gap, two gap. That's it. Just a couple of little gaps there. So we look at the bigger, broader, wider view, and you see where you have come from. And again, this number is wrong. I'm sure it's wrong. I'm sure it's up fractionally more than what that is. But this is a 9% move coming off of our lows from down here. Or I could be wrong, but whatever. 9%. Uh Again, QQQ, that's where everything is, everything. And you've got a big week of QQQ that's going to be reporting this week. So we bring you to the VIX. And the VIX being as lethargic it is as it has been, as I said, when we went up a week ago, two weeks ago, into the middle of the month, this is too much. It's way too much. They are going to need to actually produce something or else this is not going to end well. And as you've seen, the VIX cratered back down to 1255. Got our balance off of that 1255. And here we are again into a Friday, which crushes the VIX. And we got crushed down below that 1339. So the VIX is going to be significant. However, the VIX is going to follow what is reported by all of these big names during the course of this week. So start you out here. Microsoft, no all time highs last week. Couple of gaps, 2024 open 373.69. For me, 
I see Microsoft above 397 as being bullshit. Here's why. You can bring you on to the 90 day, just so you see the move off of 309. 100 point move, 30% move off of the October lows, September. Bring you into a wider view. You see here, you're almost 100% off of the October lows from last year. The bigger, broader, wider spectrum coming into, let's call it a 20 week so you can really see it. Really looks, you know, stressed in there, but bring it out here, 10 weeks. The move after you break above the dot-com highs over here in 2016. These moves all together condensed is looking exactly as if you have your big three, your big four, and this is your big five that you have been in since essentially October of last year. Not going to say it that it's going to break below 400, but if I was going to play Microsoft and I was going to be involved, I would be selling the 400 calls, buying the 40250s or buying the 405 calls, very much expecting that you are going to be getting Microsoft below 400 at the end of the week. So we go on to the next one and the next one being, where are we? AMD like this. AMD with a new all time high last week as well. Nice little gap over here from last week. Nice little gap from prior. Little tiny gap going back earlier in the month as the 2024 open and the 2022 open are right on top of each other, right around 144. Come into, again, a bigger, broader view, looking at the October lows. 9274, 184, 92. I'm not Chinese, but I'm pretty good at math. That's a 100% move off of the October lows. You can suck AI dick all you like. This is bullshit. If I was going to be involved in AMD, I would be selling the 185 calls and buying above the 185 calls, expecting to see AMD at the end of the week somewhere below 165. That's me. That's my view. Google. Different story here on Google with Google putting in a couple of pennies for a new all time high there earlier in the week couple of gaps traded Google quite a few times been tracking Google for a better part of eight years used to trade Google on the weeklies haven't been touching Google as of recent for various reasons and one of the big reasons that I will get into here is looking at this from a big view almost 100% off the October lows very healthy move looking at it from a wider view right back up here to the all-time highs that were over here on February of 2022 February 2? Yeah, February 1, 2022. Nice big move right back up to the all-time highs. Now, recognize what we're talking about here. Microsoft produced all-time highs. AMD produced all-time highs. Here is Microsoft, or Google, new all-time highs. The reason I won't really fuck around with Google is because you're in, a, in, you're, you're in an election year. And being that you're in an election year, there's two places where you can run ads. That's it, two. You can run them on Google and the websites Google owns, or you can run them on Facebook, which we'll get to in a second, on all of the websites that Facebook owns. So thus, because we are in an election year and they are going to generate an enormous amount of revenue, I will not fuck with Google or Facebook individually, and that's because there is a massive budget within Joe Biden's campaign. I'll always be there for you. I'll always have you back. Yeah. You thirsty? Yes. Oh, yeah. Try some of this Gatorade. Thank you. Oh, ah! whoa. Is that piss? Oh, that's not supposed to be the piss one. Why do you have a piss one? Oh, here. Why is there always a piss oh, one? Give me that. Watch it out with Gatorade. God damn it, Frank. <laughs> That's uh, pissed too! Uh, what the fuck? I almost got confused and pissed them both. 
So now that we are through that on Wednesday, sorry, I'll, you know what? I'll finish you up with Starbucks. I'll, I'll leave the drama for the end of this. Starbucks also reports on Tuesday. On Wednesday, you have the FOMC meeting. On Wednesday, you have Boeing, who can't keep a fucking plane together, and you have Qualcomm, who can't spell AI. We'll get to those here. Looking at Boeing. Boeing, somebody asked me, hey, man, what about buying the 255 calls? I'm like, dude, you better go smoke some fucking crack. Yeah, Boeing down below 200 last week, holding here at 205. Now, yeah, there's a gap here to be filled, and you know what? We'll just go and fucking put it there just for shits and giggles because nobody cares about Boeing. So bigger, broader, wider view on Boeing. Boeing is trading right below 50% from its all-time highs. Yes, I have a lot of detail on my Boeing chart. Sue me. Boeing is done. Boeing is finished. Looking at a bullish move on Boeing you are absolutely fooling yourself. Anything on Boeing that you get up into anywhere near the 230 zone, short the absolute shit out of this. Even though the highs that you got coming over here in December were 40% from the all-time highs. Looking at it from a wider view. Again, that move off of October and how they went into Boeing bag holding everybody and letting bag holders get out. Fantastic move. Now the reality is kicking in. And you know what? It was actually a good conversation I had over the weekend yesterday with one of our members who, well, no, but one of our members who works at FedEx. And I asked because I always ask, so how's things looking over there at FedEx? He's like, dude, it ain't good. So, Boeing, getting new orders, you are full of shit. Bring you back into a zoomed-in view so you don't miss the big part. Qualcomm reports on Wednesday. Qualcomm, Qualcomm. Qualcomm, 157.98, 150.38. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, well, with everybody all over AI, Qualcomm rejected at 20% from its all-time highs. Come back out into a wider view and look here. This looks, not only does it look like shit, but it looks exactly like Intel. Garbage. So, yeah, Intel, no AI. Qualcomm, no AI. Uh, what is it? Uh, TSM. They are not going to be building their Texas infra Gigafactory, whatever the hell you call it, because they have already cited that there is very weak demand for AI chips. But everyone is out there making sure their Robinhood accounts have NVIDIA and AMD in them. So you do what you want with those. But again, on Wednesday, the big thing on Wednesday is the FOMC meeting. So two o'clock is the FOMC meeting during the day. I've shared this dozens of times. You do not move all day long from opening bell until that two o'clock announcement comes out. You are wasting energy. You are wasting time. Don't even try and screw around with it because everything starts on Wednesday at 2 o'clock and it ends at the closing bell. You got two hours. So Apple. Apple, very interesting, is now announcing that their car is going to be coming out, but it won't come out until 2028. Apple, yeah, Apple email, that works. Uh, 15 day, 30. Dude, I, I literally, last week when I put that alert out about the gap fill calls on Apple, I almost made it a 32 trade alert, but I just didn't like that it was a January 26th expiration, and we have earnings coming up on this week. I would rather have been able to look out two weeks, three weeks, maybe even a month to be a little bit safer on the call play. That call play off of that bounce was stupid, so whichever. Big gap over here to be filled on Apple down below 185, which was your all-time highs in January 2022. Come over onto a wider view. And as you see here, you've already posted your all-time highs back here in December. A little move down, which really started to break some big warning levels. Here's your bounce, which looks very much like an A and a B. 
come over onto a bigger wider view coming off of the October lows. And as you can see there, we broke down below that October high. Zoom out here a little bit more. We very much broke down below the July high, very much broke down below the September highs. So Apple, no looky bueno. She no looky bueno. Actually, it's Apple. I think what's going to happen to guys that are in calls after the Apple report is going to be... So, yeah, uh, Apple, again, one of those ones to stay away from. So Amazon, another one. Amazon over here. Matthew loves Amazon. Matthew's played a lot of Amazon. Matthew, or sorry, Amazon, bigger, broader, wider view. 23.6 retracement to the 2018 lows. 23.6 retracement to the February 2018 lows. Right over here a week ago, we broke above being minus 20% from the all-time highs. Now, Amazon has not put in new all-time highs. Had a nice run up, call it 100% off the you know, 2023 lows, but has not put in a new all-time high as of yet. So thus, with 188.65 being the all-time highs, I would not, I would not go out there and start throwing money at 185, 180 calls for earnings. I wouldn't do it, but I would be expecting that Amazon will get a pop off of earnings. And because they report on Thursday, you guys who have been with us for years, you know that we have a very, very consistent trading play with the Friday expiration Amazons that we've gotten 3,000, 5,000, 9,000% on penny options with Amazon. So let Amazon report. We'll be able to trade it on Friday and move on from there. So the last one to cover of the big bangers that are reporting this week is Meta. And Meta, again, new all-time high here on Friday, 396.79. 384.33 was the old all-time high. And looking at it from a 30-day view, just going back here to middle of December, you know, had your big drop there into the beginning of the year. 2024 open at 351. Couple of gaps. Again, as much as I detest Facebook, as much as I have told people my entire life, well, Facebook hadn't been around my entire life, so little exaggeration. But I have stressed to people, do not put your real name on Facebook. Don't do it. Facebook made their money for decades, a decade, by selling information to government agencies. You putting your real name out there just tells them everything. And what they can do when you go onto Facebook and Instagram is send you the advertisements and the posts which fit your profile and brainwash you into the things that you think that you like and literally direct your life. I'm not going to get into Facebook too much, but again, that's Facebook. And I got a bad history with Facebook. From a wider point of view, wider view, one, two, off of that humongous drop from 384 down here to 88, a 300 point drop. 75%. Actually, you know what? I, I, AMD. AMD. I'll go back to it. I forgot to cover that. AMD. I'll get back to Facebook. AMD. Here's your highs over here in, in November 2021. And then your decline. Your decline of over 100 points. Greater than 60% from the all-time highs that dropped there in 2022. 2022 was not fucking bad. Up here. The view I have on AMD, every way, every single way that I have looked at this, I can't look at it in any other way. I see this as an A and a B, and here is our C. AMD is going to eat a humongous bag of dicks. It's just a matter of time. So back on to Meta. Again, looking at it for what it is, which is what it is. You got a one, you got a two, got a three, got a four, and this being very clean five, producing a five, looks like a five. Still, again, 
because we're at 396.79, the psychological 400 is 100% in play. 100% in play. I would be expecting to see Facebook, Meta, whatever you call it, produce above 400. And should it produce above 400, I would then be looking at a very aggressive play on Facebook, Meta, what, whatever it's called. So last but not least, and I'm going to zoom in here so that I don't destroy the drama, is Starbucks. Come on. Starbucks on Friday, 93 to 92, trolled and closed right there at 92.79, up 19 cents. Wider view, Starbucks declined, 98.79, down here to 91.40, trading right there at 92.79. Here's the big broader view of one year. Looking down here at the September lows of 2022, the move up to that 115.48, and how we have retraced a lot better than 50% of that, because the lows are a lot lower than that. Your lows coming over there into 2022 are at 68.39, and we are currently right there at a 50 retracement down to those lows, with 126.32 having been your all-time highs. You can see this fade is just fading since May. You can see your pop here off of earnings. Right there. Here's your earnings pop in May. Boom. Spill the fucking beans. Nothing off earnings over here back in, what was this, July? Boom, boom. The markets topped in July. We were playing the downside anyway. Here's your drop into October. Then here's your October earnings, or sorry, yeah, here's your earnings over here in November and your run up here into November 15th with the rest of the market and you have faded all of this off. I want to see Starbucks up here, 100, 95, 98, 100, 102, 104. I want to see Starbucks pop up here. Starbucks pops up here. 32 trade alert is going out Wednesday for the trade after they report on Tuesday. And Wednesday, like I said, your bigger, broader, wider view is with this SPX, with how we have moved off of that October low three months in a row, not a red flag being up three months in a row, November, December, January, not a red flag at all. Not at all, but because of where we have come to and how we have gotten here, February, with the FOMC being on Wednesday, your full moon having been two days ago, you break below 47.14, you break below 46.80, we are going 4,400. That's it. Bottom line. So... Have an amazing Sunday, even though you don't have any football. Get on your spreadsheets, get on your charts, and more importantly, never forget, trading is easy. This is a day in the life of a 13-year-old day trader. First we wake up, then we go over to the desk, hop on the charts, start printing, hop into the limitless VC, and you already know what's about to happen in there. All cooks. Chicago alerted, yes, yeah, shorts. Got in, 700. Let's go, baby. Uh, I'm him. Steph alerted NQ longs. Second alert this month with a fucking bum. This year at, the, at max. Printed there. Up 711 on the day. I lost 180 yesterday, so I just made the 180 back. Let's go! So you're out here trying to tell me that I'm a 13 year old making $700 a day. Still going to school? Dude, I make more money a day than my teachers, bro. And I sit here. Look at some fucking screens and make money.